ji can you see the screen now yes sir now yes sir yes sir uh, i am going to give you a recap of what we did in our last class so if you remember this chapter is about grammatical functions and last time we were talking about grammatical functions though uh, somehow or the other some of the uh, semantic roles were also added while discussing the grammatical functions so particularly we talked about the subject and we looked at that how subject is treated and how we can identify the subject from one of the book of peter sallies uh, we we read about Uh, three different tests that we can perform to find out the subjecthood of the sentence and we read that there is subject and verb agreement test and if we can follow that test we can find out the subject uh, second test was a uh, uh, question tag test because when we are producing question tags again we repeat the auxiliary verb as well as the subject of the sentence so this is how we can find out the subjecthood of, of the test then the third test that we read on that day was about subject and verb auxiliary test so if we apply these three tests correctly of course we can find out the subjecthood of the sentence then we move to another book that was of uh, jim miller's book and we read some of the very complex ideas about the subjecthood of the sentence and the and we read that Uh, as some of the people say that doer of the action is the subject then we read some of the sentences where the subject was there no doubt because it was coming in the beginning and it was uh, about it that the whole phrase was being written clause was being written but it was not performing any action and then we read that when the uh, subject it performs an action it is called basically agent and if in active voice and passive voice Uh, the agent is the same then we call it logical subject and the third kind of subject that we read it was called psychological subject and about psychological subject we have read that in systemic function linguistics when uh, something is coming in the beginning of the sentence that is the subject it may not perform the action it may not be the logical subject it may not be the grammatical subject it may not be the uh, agent but still it is the psychological subject because it is coming in the beginning of the sentence for example the example the author gave was the prey tigers hunted the prey tigers hunted so here the prey is coming first but we know that grammatically speaking tiger is performing the action tiger is the agent tiger is the logical subject tiger is the grammatical subject but the prey is the psychological subject is this clear ji this is what we talked about Yes, yes sir. sir yes sir yes, this sir. is clear then we moved forward yes, on that day and we talked about some of the other ideas for example we we talked about uh we we talked about yes uh, if something is coming near the verb it does not mean that it does not mean that it is the subject so still we have to find out the uh, subject as well then we read that sometimes after verb some other uh, you know uh, non finite clause they also come near it so for example we read that ahmed intends to reach kashgar for example if this is the sentence ahmed intends to reach kashgar so here to reach it is the non finite uh it is the non finite uh you know phrase complement and it should have uh, uh it should have understood subject and the understood subject is the same subject that is ahmed which is the subject of the uh you know which is the subject of the finite uh verb so finite verb is a verb which uh tells us about time and non finite verb is a verb which does not tell us about time so uh, ahmed intends to reach karachi ahmed intends intends is the finite verb and to reach is the non finite verb but it has understood subject and that is still ahmed yahi humne padha tha na ji sir bilkul yes sir then another kind of uh, sentence introduced by the author was that after the finite verb there is a complement noun phrase and then there is 
non finite verb for example ahmed wanted me to work hard ahmed wanted me to work hard or ahmed wanted khuram to work hard so here we have got after wanted another noun phrase that is khuram and then non finite a uh, phrase that is to work hard so here to work hard it has got uh, understood subject that is khuram because khuram is to work hard and then again the other subject is ahmed because it is coming in the beginning and ahmed is the one who is uh, wanting or who wants khuram to do or work hard or work hard then some of the other concepts were introduced uh, like uh, like quantifiers we read that quantifiers like all and both when they are part of the uh, subject uh, subject np so they can move around in the sentence they can float and when quantifiers like all or both they are part of the objective case or object in the sentence then they cannot move around then we also read that if there are two sentences and the subject of the sentence two sentences are same the second subject can be omitted but when it is the case with the object then the um, object cannot be omitted so these were some of the things that we talked about in our last class ji what do you think is there any other thing that we have talked about no sir nothing is remaining that we uh, learnt last time uh, you have discussed it now so still if you have any confusion any question about the things that we talked about last time you can ask me the question excuse me sir you just discussed that we also uh, read about quantifiers quantifiers uh, can you please repeat it one time sir like all and both for example all the students all the students can perform here so we can yes, say sir. the students all can perform here or both of the students can perform here or the students both can perform here because it is part of the subject so it is moving it is floating it is slipping away from its original place but when it is the part of the object then they cannot move around then uh, they have to stay there yes sir okay i can show you uh, from the book as well look all the foxes were hunted by larry 20 men the foxes were all hunted by larry 20 men so here all it is moving it is floating because it is part of the subject can you see yes sir and larry 20 men hunted all the foxes here all the foxes all is part of the object so it cannot move around now you can't say larry 20 men all hunted the foxes wrong larry 20 men hunted the foxes all wrong george built both the houses correct part of the object now you can't move george both built the houses wrong george built the houses both wrong so when quantifiers like all and both they are part of the object they cannot move around they cannot float but when they are part of the subject they can move around they can float and one more point that we talked about in our last class was about reflexive pronouns and we read that subject also controls the reflexive pronoun is that okay ji yes sir yes sir. any other question now which is in your mind you can ask then i should otherwise i shall move forward ji is this clear yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay ali could you please read now now our next topic is direct and indirect objects and then uh, something about indirect objects we will be reading uh, from uh, jim miller's well, book well. g ali can you see this yes screen? sir yes sir g please 
a, <clears throat> a direct object do is a, a canonically an np undergoing the process denoted by the verb uh, 14a his girlfriend bought this computer that silly fool broke the teapot however this is not a solid generalization the object obj and 15a and 15b are not really uh, affected by the action and 15a the dog is experiencing something and 15b the thunder is somehow causing some feeling in the dog 15a yes. first of all he is telling us that direct object is basically an np noun phrase and usually it is controlled by the verb okay verb tells us that what we can have as an object direct object so his girlfriend bought this computer so this computer is direct object and at the same time it is np that silly fool broke the teapot so the teapot is direct object and at the same time it is an np now here he is saying that uh, because this computer is affected by the subject or teapot is affected by that silly fool so it is not always the case that objects they are affected by the action of the subject as we have read previously that it is not always the subject which is performing the action so we read that uh, amna is wearing a beautiful suit amna is wearing a beautiful uh, amna wears a beautiful suit so amna wears a beautiful suit amna isn't doing anything it is just a state which we are experience telling about amna so same is the case object is not every time affected by the action of the subject so that is why he is saying in 15a the dog is experiencing something and in 15b the thunder is somehow causing some feeling in the dog now please read and he is bringing the ideas from systemic functional linguistics grammar okay that is why he is introducing Uh, the experiencer basically the object which is affected by the action of the subject okay is called patient in systemic functional linguistics so there are certain things which are not patient they may be experiencer so here he is introducing the concept of experiencer ji please 15a ali yes sir uh, thunder frightens the dog the dog fears thunder once again the data show us that we can't identify the object based on some uh, semantic roles a um, much more uh, firm criterion is systematic construction of passive addition in which yeah, a notional please, direct object this is very important ali he is telling us that if we bring the concepts of semantic roles and then we try to determine whether something is object or not this is not a good criteria criterion because a uh, dog who is experiencing the uh, act of frightening okay uh, we are saying that it is an experiencer and it is not a patient but it does not mean that dog is not object so semantic roles sometimes fail to point out or identify whether it is object or not got this point so he says a much more firm criteria criterion is the syntactic construction of passivization passivization will tell us whether something is object or not because when something is object it can be changed into the passive voice when something is not the object it cannot be changed into the passive voice are you getting this point yes sir ab dog patient to nahi hai yahan par wo experiencer hai to semantic role hame keh raha hai ki ye affect nahi hua ठीक है हम इसको एक्सपीरियंसर कहेंगे ठीक है जी आप एक्सपीरियंसर कहें हमें इससे कोई तकलीफ नहीं आप एक्सपीरियंसर कहें उसे पेशेंट कहें लेकिन वो हमें ये बताना चाह रहा है कि सीमेंटिक रोल जो है दे कैन नॉट आइडेंटिफाई द ऑब्जेक्ट्स सो इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट द ऑब्जेक्ट हुड ऑफ देंटेंस वी हैव गॉट ए टेस्ट दैट टेस्ट इज कॉल्ड पैसिवाइजेशन टेस्ट तो हम ये टेस्ट लगा के देखेंगे इफ समथिंग कैन बी चेंज इन टू दैसिव वॉइस सो दैट इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट इफ समथिंग कैन नॉट बी चेंज इन टू दैसिव वॉइस so that may be experiencer or patient or whatever you may call it okay but if it cannot be changed then it is not an object if it can be changed it is object got this yes sir yeah please now please you start ali a much more from yes. criterion 
Yes, sir. Uh, a much more firm criterion is the syntactic construction of passivization in which a notional direct object appears as subject. The sentences in 16 can be turned into passivized sentences in 17. Yeah. 16 so he says He's, that notional direct objects appear as subject. If something is object, it can be turned into passive voice and then it can be turned into the subject of the sentence. So then we can say it is a direct object. We can say it is an object. But semantic roles will not help us to find out the objecthood of the sentence. Got this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. 16A, his girlfriend brought this computer for him. The child broke the teapot by accident. 17A, this computer was bought for him by his girlfriend. The teapot was broken by the child by accident. What we can notice here is that the objects in the 16 are promoted to subject in the passive uh, passive sentences, the test comes for the fact that non-objects or uh, non-object NPs, noun phrases, cannot be promoted to the subject. Yes. At 18A, this item belongs to the student. The student is belonged to by this item. 19A, this he remained... Here, the student, it cannot be promoted as a subject of the sentence in passive voice. So this item belongs to the student. It means that here it cannot be turned into the passive voice and to the student is not the object. Are you getting this point? Yes, sir. 19. Uh, 19A, he remained a good friend to me. A good friend is remained to me by him. The objects that undergo passivization. Again, again, it cannot be changed. Good friend is not the object. Uh, the objects that undergo passivization are direct objects distinct from indirect objects. Gee, now we are going to talk about indirect objects. An indirect object, IO, is one which precedes a direct object, as in uh, 20, IOs are NPs and have the semantic rules of goals, recipient are benefactive. 20 a okay. i threw you again ali because he brings in systemic function linguistics he is telling us indirect objects they come before direct objects again it is not a necessary rule it is up to us sometimes we can write direct objects first and sometimes we can write indirect objects later but mostly usually people write indirect objects first and then direct objects and the semantic role of the indirect object is that it is goal, recipient, or benefactive. Indirect object can be called a goal. Sometimes it can be called a recipient, or sometimes it can be called a benefactive. But again, passivization will determine whether it can be changed into the subject of the passive voice or not. So semantic roles will not tell us whether they can be converted as objects or not. Are you getting this point or not? Yes, sir. Gee, please read the... Yes, sir. Uh, read now, 20. 20A, I threw the puppy, the ball, and the indirect object, goal. John gave the boys the CDs, indirect object recipient. My mother backed me a birthday cake, indirect object, benefactive. An examples like 20 passive has property of making the indirect object into the subject. Please, 21A. So I threw the puppy the ball. So what is puppy? It is indirect object because it is coming before the ball. Okay. And puppies in semantic role is goal because puppy is getting the ball. So puppy is goal. John gave the boys the CDs. The boys is recipient because the boys are getting the CDs. An indirect object. My mother baked me, me, indirect object. And it is benefactive because it is getting the benefit of a birthday cake. But again, whether they are gold recipient or benefactive, we cannot say whether they can be changed into passive voice or not.
if they can be changed they will be called objects if they cannot be changed they cannot be called objects are you getting this point yes sir yes sir yes sir if we read now yes, in examples like 20 an examples like 20 passive has the property of making the end direct object into the subject 21a the boys were given the series by john she was uh, 21b she was sent a review copy of the book by the publisher note that sentences with uh, with the uh, uh, indirect object direct ob uh, object order are different from those where the semantic role of uh, indirect object Uh, is expressed an oblique uh, pp following the direct object such as the process uh, is sometimes called dative alteration alteration 2020 uh, 20a john gave oh, please the here. stop here yes sir ab he is going to introduce the concept of oblique object as well oblique object kya hai we need to understand this dekhen we have got indirect object here i threw the puppy the ball to so indirect object yahan pe yahan kya tha the puppy john gave the boys the series indirect object yahan pe kya tha the boys my mother baked me in indirect object pe kya tha me aisa hi hai na ji sir bilkul ab इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट वाले जो जुमले होते हैं जिसमें दो ऑब्जेक्ट्स आ रहे हैं वी कैन राइट देम इन टू डिफरेंट वेज एक तो यही था पहले इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इज कमिंग एंड देन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इज कमिंग द बॉयज इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट एंड द सीरीज डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट मी इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट एंड बर्थडे केक डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इनको लिखने का दूसरा तरीका ये है माई मदर बेक ए बर्थडे केक फॉर मी ऐसा ही है ना जॉन गेव दीरी टू दी बॉयज टू दी बॉयज आई थ्रू The ball to the puppy, ठीक है अब यहां पर ये नाउन फ्रेजेस थी जब हमने टू फॉर और इस तरह के वर्ड लगा दिए तो ये पीपी में चेंज हो गई किसमें चेंज हो गई पीपी में प्रपोजिशन फ्रेज बन गई ना नाउन फ्रेज इज चेंज इन टू प्रपोजिशन फ्रेज सर अब ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट उसको कहते हैं विच स्टार्ट विद ए प्रपोजिशन विच स्टार्ट विद ए प्रपोजिशन अब कुछ दफा तो जो है वो ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट वो प्रपोजिशन से स्टार्ट होते हैं लेकिन उसके बाद फिर एनपी ही आ रहा होता है टू के बाद लेकिन कुछ जगहों पर यह होता है कि प्रपोजिशन के बाद एनपी तो आता है लेकिन वो एनपी जो होता है एडवर्ब ऑफ प्लेस या एडवर्ब ऑफ टाइम होता है दैट इज नॉट द सेम काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट तो कंफ्यूजन ये पैदा हो जाती है कि टू के बाद जो एनपी आ रहा है वेदर इट इज ए नाउन फ्रेज एंड इट कैन बी टर्न इन टू दैसिव वॉइस और नॉट और इट इज एन एडवर्बियल फ्रेज So, agar if it is an adverbial phrase, adverbial phrase cannot be turned into the passive voice. Then it cannot be made the subject of the passive voice sentence. Or, ye sabse badi confusion pada karta hai, jis pe uh, Jim Miller ne detailed discussion ki hai. And after this book, of course, we will be talking about Jim Miller's book, jahan pe wo bahut detailed discussion karta hai, just to tell us the difference between ke when these indirect objects they are written after the direct objects. and we bring in the preposition then it becomes very confusing that whether it is a, an object or it is an adverbial phrase meri baat samajh mein aayi aapko ki nahi aayi ji sir samajh gaye jab puppy abhi indirect object hai lekin ball pehle likh dein to i threw the ball to the puppy ho jata hai to to the puppy ab kya hai prepositional phrase ban gayi hai wo yahan par to np tha lekin wahan par wo prepositional phrase bani hai लेकिन अभी भी ये जुमला कन्वर्ट हो सकता है पैसे वॉइस में लेकिन कई दफा ऐसे होता है कि टू के बाद जगह का नाम आ जाता है तो जगह का नाम क्या है दैट इज एडवर्ब ऑफ प्लेस दैट इज एडवर्ब ऑफ टाइम टाइम भी आ सकता है ठीक है देन ऑफ कोर्स दे कैन नॉट बी कन्वर्टेड इनटू टू दैसे वॉइस और अब वो सब ऐसे ऑब्जेक्ट जो, जो टू से शुरू हो रहे हो उसको वो कहते हैं ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट तो oblique object is a concept which is quite confusing because after that noun phrase is coming but sometimes that noun phrase can be converted into the passive voice but sometimes that is the name of a place and then that adverbial uh, place uh, adverbial uh, uh, clause or uh, adverbial phrase of uh, you know place or time cannot be converted into the passive voice 
तो यहां पर ये ओब्लिक कॉन्सेप्ट जो है ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट जो है इट क्रिएट्स प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर अस अभी आप दोबारा यहां से पढ़ें नोट दैट सेंटेंसेस जी सर नोट दैट सेंटेंसेस विद एन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट आर डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ऑर्डर आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दोस वेयर द सेमेंटिक रोल ऑफ द एन एन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इज एक्सप्रेस एज एन ऑब्लिक प्रेपोजिशनल फ्रेज फॉलो फॉलोइंग द डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट सच एज प्रोसेस प्रोसेस इज समाइम्स कॉल्ड डेटिव अल्ट्रेशन अब ट्वेंटी कहते हैं कि जिसमें प्रेपोजिशन फ्रेज आ रही है लेकिन वो ऑब्जेक्ट भी है इसको डेटिव केस कहते हैं या डेटिव ऑल्टरेशन कहते हैं चलो ये तो बात समझ में आ गई लेकिन प्रॉब्लम ये कि समटाइम्स वो नेम होता है किसी प्लेस का तो देन ऑफ कोर्स इट कैन नॉट बी कन्वर्टेड लेकिन जो भी ऑब्जेक्ट टू से आएगा शुरू होकर आएगा दैट इज कॉल्ड ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट गॉट दॉइंट ये सर पढ़े ट्वेंटी ए जॉन गेव दीडीज टू द बॉयस the publisher sent a review copy of the book to her my mother baked a cake for me Ab and this kind to the boys is prepositional phrase to her is a prepositional phrase for me is prepositional phrase aur oblique object kya hai oblique object starts with preposition to ye sare object hain abhi yahan par confusion isliye hamare liye nahi hai they all can be converted into the passive voice lekin jab kisi jagah ka naam aa jata hai and then it becomes adverb Uh, adverbial uh, phrase of place ya adverbial phrase of time then it creates a confusion for the reader ki we should call it oblique object or not so some of the people say ki ye bhi oblique object hai but this oblique object cannot be converted into the passive voice or on the other hand to the boys to her for me all of these three sentences can be converted into the passive voice getting yes sir ki please and this kind of example it is once again the direct object which can be passivized giving examples like the following 23a the cds were given to the boys by john a review copy of the book was sent to her by the publisher this nice cake was baked for me by my mother ab yahan pe ye thodi si galti kar raha hai theek hai ye syntactically cheezon ke sath deal kar raha hai jabki aisa nahi hai to the boys ko bhi hum shuru mein la sakte hain hum keh sakte hain the boys were given the cds by john keh sakte hain ki nahi keh sakte hain yes bilkul sir yes sir jab ye yahan pe kya keh raha hai it is once again the direct object which can be passive passivized ye keh raha hai indirect object ko passive voice mein tabdeel nahi kiya ja sakta to ye galat keh raha hai theek hai to ye they all can be converted into the passive voice wo tab passive voice mein convert nahi honge oblique object jisme adverbial phrase aa jayegi are you getting my point Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, before we move forward, I would request all of you to give it a silent reading. And if you have any question, you can ask me. Please give it a silent reading.
Done. <clears throat> Gee, any question which is you want to ask or any concept which is not clear to you? Sir, so, dative alteration is a bit confusing. Yeah, cheese. Dative alteration. Dative case. Dative case, है ना? वो कहता है कि आप ये जो This is a noun of. उन फ्रेज जब आप इनडायरेक्ट को बाद में लगाते हैं और डायरेक्ट को पहले लगाते हैं तो वो इनडायरेक्ट वाले को डेटिव केस हम कहते हैं बस वो कुछ नहीं है वो छोड़ दें राइट सर थैंक यू एक्सक्यूज मी सर जी जी Sir, in dative case, uh, um, also known as dative alteration, indirect object comes first, and then uh, direct then object comes direct. first, and then comes the indirect object. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Sir, I, I question. Uh, uh, sir, in twenty three a, the sentence which has been converted into passive, the series were given to the boys by John. Can we write the same sentence in this way? The series were given by John to the boys. No, no. वो by phrase end में जानी चाहिए ना. By phrase जो होती है वो end में जानी चाहिए. अच्छा ये इसका लाज़मी है सर मतलब. क्योंकि आप सारी बात पहले करेंगे उसके बाद आप सब्जेक्ट को ऑब्जेक्ट का हिसाब ऑब्जेक्ट बनाएंगे ना पैसे बॉयज में तो बाय फ्रेज एंड में सब जगहों पर देख लें यू कैन सी दैट बाय फ्रेज दैट इज कमिंग एट द एंड अब वही कंफ्यूजन दैट वी हैव जस्ट टॉक्ड अबाउट के ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट जो होता है इट स्टार्ट विद टू ठीक है एंड द प्रॉब्लम अराइज इज दैट After two, sometimes adverbial phrase also comes. Okay, so the test that uh, uh, John Bok Kim has described, that is the test of passivization. It exactly tells us what is the subject of the sentence or object of the sentence. So this confusion is being talked about here, elaborated here by Jim Miller. The confusion between the oblique object. okay because oblique object starts with preposition to and then sometimes after that preposition instead of the np we st are still getting np but that is part of adverbial phrase when it is the name of a place are you getting the point that i have made and i am still making yes sir and one yes, question sir, sir. I, i would like to ask sir one question sir Yeah. is it uh, necessary that oblique object should start with the two or with other preposition such as like as well like in 20 koi bhi preposition koi bhi jo preposition koi bhi preposition ho ji sir ji sir 
जी जी रिसेंट वर्क इन सिंटेक्स डिप्लॉयज द कांसेप्ट ऑफ ऑब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट इन इंग्लिश एनी नाउन फ्रेज दैट इज द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ अ प्रीपोजिशन दैट इज द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ अ प्रीपोजिशन इज एन ऑब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट वेयर द प्रीपोजिशन फ्रेज इज इटसेल्फ द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ अ वर्ब इन 19 टू ओनीगिन to igilse and for jane are oblique objects to for se bhi to shuru ho raha hai na titiana road to onigen magnus went to igilse frank bought a piano for jane so phrases such as to onigen used to be analyzed as containing indirect object nouns but this concept of indirect object is problematic ab wo khud hi admit kar raha hai ki ye problematic hai kyunki अभी तो हमें ये पता नहीं चल रहा कि ये ओनीगेन तो शायद किसी जगह का नाम नहीं है लेकिन वेंट टू गिल से ये जगह का नाम है जैसे ऐसे ये अहमद वेंट टू कराची अब टू कराची ऑफ कोर्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द डेफिनेशन वी हैव जस्ट रेड इज ऑब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट बट कैन वी कन्वर्ट अहमद वेंट टू कराची इन टू पैसिव वॉइस The question is no, sir. Never. No. No. Because that is never, sir. No doubt, Karachi is again NP, but this oblique object or this NP is not uh, the kind of subject which can be turned into the passive voice. Rather, it is the name of a place, adverbial uh, uh, phrase. Okay, that is uh, adverbial phrase of place. So it cannot be changed into the passive voice. Secondly, we have already read in different grammar books. that went is a verb or go is a verb which is not used in passive voice aisa hi hai na yes sir yes sir yes sir bolya aza yahan pe ye khud hi problematic bana ke ab ek discussion generate karega kafi lambi chodi si theek hai to hum pad lete hain lekin i would like ki aap uh, you should give it a silent reading first and then if there is some concept which i have already tried to clarify you can ask me give it a silent reading
G, have you given it a reading? Yes, sir. G, what is your understanding? Yes. What do you think? What the author is talking about about oblique object? What is your understanding? G, can you please talk about it? جی فوزیہ قرد الین عائشہ قیاب اما جی سر ہیر ان دیس اگزامپلز دی رائٹر سیز دیس دو دی پریڈیکیٹیو کامپلیمنٹس آر سرونگ از نون فریزیز از ویل بڈ دی کن نوٹ بی کنورٹیو انٹو پیسر وائنس
Anything else? Okay, what we have read is that the same conclusion that I talked about earlier that when about oblique object oblique object is an object which starts with preposition okay and uh, then the confusion arises that after two sometimes the noun phrase is coming and that noun phrase can be converted into the passive voice but sometimes adverbial phrase is coming of place or time so of course they cannot be converted into the uh, passive voice so here the confusion arises that everything which is coming after the two should we call it oblique object or not and then he gives us or suggests us certain kinds of tests that we can apply to see that whether they can be converted into the passive voice or not so he says that we can apply the test of what and where so of course where will give us the answer of adverb of place and what will all force uh, of course will be giving us uh, about the uh, uh, you know phrase noun phrase which can be converted into the passive voice so he is just uh, talking about the confusion which they try to resolve but they find it difficult to resolve that is why if i share the screen again you can see in conclusion what the author is saying look here this is one difference concealed by the use of what place in 25 indirect objects are questioned by who to or to whom but adverbs of direction are questioned by where however this is one difference to be set against a number of similarities and it could be in any case be argued that the difference does not reflect a syntactic category but a difference in the sorts of entities that are the end point of the movement where being reserved for places who for human beings the analysis indicated by the above data is that we cannot maintain the traditional concept of indirect objects as the two phrase which verbs such as give or show and that all verb complements introduced by a preposition should be treated as one category namely oblique objects so wo kehta hai ki we cannot treat all the categories okay which are starting with the two objects as oblique objects क्यों सो ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट इज वन दैट कैन बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू दैसिव वॉइस बट वेन दर्बियल फ्रेज इज कमिंग आफ्टर टू वी शुड नॉट कॉल इट ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट आर यू गेटिंग दिस कॉन्सेप्ट सारे टेस्ट अप्लाई करने के बाद इस नतीजे पर पहुंचा है कि जब एडवर्ब ऑफ प्लेस आएगा या एडवर्ब ऑफ टाइम आएगा वी शुड नॉट कॉल इट ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट सो ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट इज इन डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट बेसिकली और इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट को ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट भी कह सकते हैं बट अगेन ऑब्जेक्ट इज समिंग विच इज टू बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू दैसिव वॉइस इसीलिए कहते हैं कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट डेड हाउ एवर लिहाजा वो कहते हैं वो इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट वाला जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो डेड नहीं हुआ तो ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट भी वही है दैट इज इनडायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट और हमें हर ऑब्जेक्ट को ओब्लिक ऑब्जेक्ट नहीं कहना चाहिए बिकॉज टू इट इज स्टार्टिंग विद टू और प्रपोजिशन और फॉर so when the adverb of place or adverb of time is coming then it is not oblique object when indirect object is coming then we can call it oblique object is this clear now yes sir yes sir so yes, sir. again please again read this concept that you have already read just a 2 minute reading okay and uh, then we will move forward direct and indirect object please give it a reading again
जी इज देर एनी कंफ्यूजन नाउ अली इज देर एनी क्वेश्चन नो सर जी रेस्ट ऑफ यू नायमा अमारा नायाब हुमा नो सर 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 दिस इज क्लियर सर नो सर चलिए दैट्स वेरी गुड इफ ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर क्लियर टू यू वी कैन टेक